He said, please have me excused. He said, for I have bought a, a five yoke of oxen. That means he had 10 oxes. I bought me five yoke of oxen and I must go prove them. Let me go, let me go test them out. An ox in that day would have been like a farmer's tractor today. How many of you know oxes didn't have headlights back then? Somebody shout, the storyline is, is supper time. Evening time. It's about to be dark. Somebody shout, he excused himself for the lie. He weren't about to go out and prove his oxen. Them jokers was in the pen. It's dark almost. He weren't going to labor in the field. But he used his ox, which Proverbs 14 and 14 calls a blessing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Here again, he's using his blessings to excuse himself from the blesser. It's supper time. It's almost dark. And he said, listen to this, Brother Jerry. He said, I have got five yoke of oxen. Somebody said, that's 10. Somebody shout, he, he's got 10 oxes. And he's using his way of making a living an excuse to keep him from the God that gave him the life and the living. Yeah, woo -hoo -hoo. And you know, people do that. They excuse themselves from another tenth. Hello, anybody breathe? Man, I heard the Holy Ghost today when I was studying this. Somebody say, 10 yoke of oxen. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, God says, those elders that lead you well, they are worthy of double honor, especially if they labor among you in word. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, in word and in doctrine. Ain't that amazing? They labor in the word. Somebody shout, their work is to preach the word. Their labor is to teach the doctrine, the word of God that sound. Come on, somebody. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and 5 said, do the work of an evangelist. Come on, make full proof of thy ministry. Ain't that amazing? Work in ministry in the same sentence. Somebody said to me the other day, out in the heat of the sun, while I was standing there, hey man, sweating. They don't matter where I'm at. I sweat. Oh, it don't make no difference. Especially when I preach. Come on, somebody. I sweat. Hallelujah. And some guy walked up to me and he said, preacher, you ain't used to the heat, are you? ain't used to the heat, are you? And then he made a sarcastic statement about preaching and about getting donations. There was a lot of folks around, so I had to hold my peace so I could hold my peace. Because I knew there was ears around that probably wouldn't understand, so I just had to. But I thought, man, I, I said, used to the heat. I reminded him of my tent ministry, but I said, come watch me sweat. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Didn't Genesis 3, amen, 19, said from the sweat of his face, talking about when the curse came because of sin, Adam, in the sweat of his face, come on, somebody. Hallelujah, he would earn his living or he would get his food. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. I started to ask him, hey, man, you don't have air conditioner in your car? I wanted to ask him, do you have to change your clothes every time you do your work because they're soaked with sweat? Come on, somebody. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Praise God. And it, because they don't think it's work, they think preachers, uh, hey man, that do this full time, just a bunch of low lives. Come on, somebody. And they don't do a thing that there's nothing to it. Uh, but it's amazing what God's word says. Uh, hallelujah. He calls ministry the work of the ministry. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? And God said an elder, a leader, praise God, that's laboring, working, uh, preaching the word, uh, teaching the word is worthy. Somebody say a double honor. Yes. Yes. First Timothy five seventeen and by verses 18. God said, for it is written, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. In other words, since I'm talking about oxes, 10 as a number of tithe, because that's five yoke of oxen from Luke 14. Come on, somebody. God said in that day, when you let the ox 
shred out your corn. Make it into the cornmeal that you're needing. Come on, he's treading it out. He said, don't put a muzzle on his snout. Hallelujah. Amen. Let him be free. Amen. To partake of his labor. Let him put his nose down in where he's working at and let him eat from his labor. Because he said, the laborer is worthy of his reward. The laborer who? The laborer that preaches, that teaches the word of God. God said is worthy to eat from his labor in the word. Last time I checked, it takes money to eat. Hello, somebody. But you know what's happening? A lot of preachers today in modern Pentecostal churches are degraded and despised and made lower than that of an ox. Even an ox eats better than some preachers do. And some churches wonder why God can't move. Because if you don't take care of him that brings you the spiritual meat, come on somebody, God says, I'll hold back the windows of heaven. Come on somebody, I will not send. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Hmm. Hear my voice through the vessel of my prophet this night. Have not you heard me say that my move will require a cost? It will cost you, saith the Lord. But remember it is I that blessed you. And it is I who have a mind to bless thee with more. But I say unto you, it is I who gives the seed to the sower, that in turn I might give bread to the eater. And I say to you this night, when I have in mind to bless you with more, I will always tell you to give sacrificially and do something that's not convenient, says the Spirit of the Lord. And have not I written in my word, let him that plows plow in hope, and let him that threshes in the wheat, let him receive and have hope of a reward or a payment, saith the Lord. And behold, I say unto you, have not I said, let him that preaches the gospel live or make his living of the gospel. Did not I say, remember them that have rule over you and honor them doubly. For you have heard me say double portion through my prophet this night. And I say unto you, if I expect Expected my people to let the ox tread out the corn in hope of receiving his reward. How much more do I expect the laborer who preaches my word to labor in that word of hope of receiving a payment? For it is not wrong to take care of him or her that I have known it and called to be over you as a ruler. For it not I say in my word that is written, my apostle Paul says, if we have sown unto you in spiritual things, is it a great thing that we should reap your carnal things? I say unto my people this night, do never allow your heart to deceive you and excuse yourself because of the oxen I have given you, the blessings I have given you. Never use the blessing as an excuse to disobey me or the blessing will become a curse. And this night, I, the Lord, say unto my sheep, 
as your good shepherd who lays his life down for his sheep. For I have brought in your midst, not a hireling. He will preach whether he gets enough or not. But I have sent him and his wife. I have sent him and his family to this place. And I say unto my sheep tonight, the shepherd that I have placed over you, I command a gift. I command a blessing to those who have an ear to hear that'll give to my pastor whom I have chosen over this house. Give to him either this night or either let it be between now and this coming Sunday. Give, saith the Holy Ghost, and you will see me bring a level to this revival in this move that will not just affect those here, but it will begin to touch your houses. Give to him whom I have called pastor. Give to him and watch me command a blessing on your house, says the spirit of truth. I don't know what the offering was tonight to my ministry, but it ain't to go to me. Holy Ghost said it goes to the pastor. Did y'all just hear Holy Ghost? I have never interpreted a tongue and released a prophecy ever in all my ministry in 25, almost 25 years, like what just come out of my mouth. And while I was prophesying by the Spirit of God, not knowing what my next words would be, the Lord the whole time told me the night's offering is not yours. Some says, oh, you're just doing that because what happened last night. You keep believing that if you want to. If you don't hear God in my voice, play it off. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, let it cost you something. I don't know why. I ain't asked Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry ain't said nothing to me. Hello? But Holy Ghost just spoke. Somebody say, Holy Ghost just spoke. Well, Brother Marvin, you don't know what I got need of. No, I don't, but God does. And he just said he gives seed to the sower. So look at your neighbor say, don't eat your seed, sow it. Somebody shout, don't eat your seed, sow it. Somebody shout, your seed is not enough. Yeah, if it's not enough, sow it. Give it to God when God says to give it when the ground's plowed up. And watch him bring a harvest. Hello? And if you are robbing God of a tithe, you're kind of like the Luke 14 excuser. I got five yoke oxen. Come on, somebody. I got 10 oxen. Man, if you can't trust God with the dime out of your dollar, you don't believe what's on your paper money in God we trust. And a tithe is a devoted thing. Somebody shout, that's the first thing. Right. It ain't the second thing. It ain't the third thing. It ain't the fourth thing. That means you give to Jesus before you pay bill. Right. And if you'll give to Jesus, I promise you, he'll make a way for bill to get paid. Lady told me one time, she said, but Brother Marvin, I'm on a fixed income. And my preacher told me God understood. And I said, your preacher lied to you. I said, you want your income unfixed? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and some will say, that's harsh. You shouldn't tell an elderly person like that on a fixed income. I didn't read nowhere in the Bible that people were excused. Yeah. Gave all she had. Jesus said she gave more than everybody because she gave out of her need. Oh! She knew. I call it the widow's M-I-G-H-T, might. <laughs> Not just the M-I-T-E. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say the first. In Luke 14, they excused themselves. I'm still talking about more of God. 
I'm still talking about receiving the more of God. I'm still talking about how the church today is coming behind in what God's wanting to do. He's wanting to do so much more. Hallelujah. But they want to stay on this side of Jordan where it's easy, where it's comfortable. And God's trying to get somebody to leave the shady groves of comfort and cross over. Yeah, I know it's going to kill something. You feel like you're losing but it's called faith in God and faith in God requires a death. You gotta leave Gilgal and you gotta get grounded at Bethel because Bethel's the house of God, 2 Kings chapter two, and that's where Elisha had to follow Elijah to. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout, if you're gonna see a double portion, you gotta get grounded, hallelujah, in the house of God because Psalms 92 and 15 said, blessed, amen, are those who are planted in the house of the Lord because they're gonna flourish in the courts of our God. Courts of God means his presence. Somebody shout, you can't flourish. In the mood of his presence, you can't have more. That's what flourish means. If you don't get rooted, planted in the house of God. Haggai, whose name in Hebrew means festival. He's a prophet of God. And in verse four through seven, he said, how is it? It is time to build God's house. And ye, oh ye, are in your own sealed house. That means your private homes. It's time to be at God's house, but you always at your private house. Yep. Yep. He said that's why you sow much and bring in little. Yep. He said that's why you eat ye and you ain't filled. That's why you drink and you can't get your thirst quenched. Come on, somebody. That's why you earn wages and put it in bags with holes only to lose it. He said, consider your ways, saith the Lord. And then he says, even the dew of the heaven is stayed from over you. That's the move of God. Don't tell me, come on now, you can't buy a miracle. Come on, somebody. But, 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 but you gotta understand a tithe is a dead owed and, and, and an offering is a seed sowed. You haven't given God an offering until you've been faithful in the tithe. You ain't given no tithe to God, that's his. And if you ain't giving it, you're robbing him. You're a thief. Mm, a thief on the same category, in the same category as the devil. Ten percent huh? out of a hundred dollars is ten dollars. A lot of people don't have no problem on that level, but when God starts blessing them more. Because the more the blessing, the more the tithe. Yeah. And I've seen some people just block the blessing. Because yeah. they could give on that lower level. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. It's a heart issue. It is. It's a spiritual issue. Somebody shout, it's supposed to cost you. It's could it be Come on. the experience of God's presence that you've prayed for can't happen in your life because you're disobedient in this area I'm talking about. Wow. I'm gonna tell you, if they ain't but a few in a church and if they're faithful with their tithe, God will use that consistent faithfulness of that few to take care of everything. Look at your neighbor tonight and say, everything this church will ever need is already here. Look at your neighbor. Say it's in somebody's pocket or somebody's bank. And somebody's thinking, well, I ain't got a lot there. I'm talking about the tithe. I ain't talking about the extra. The tithe. If everybody, even the few, because it's been said only 2% about every church, come on somebody, is actually who give in the tithe. Just think if 100%, I know a little church right now, I'm talking about a little church. Probably every Sunday they ain't got, they may have 25 on a good Sunday. This church supports me monthly. Every month. And I'm talking about they don't give just some little thing. 
And there's a lot of what I do I couldn't do if it weren't for that one little church. Come on, Brother Walker. They've been blessing y'all. Yeah. Now, I know you've been blessing our ministry, and I'm not one here for money. And, I, and then I, this ain't about me. Hallelujah. But that, just like Paul said in Philippians 1, or Philippians 4, he said, there's one church that communicated me concerning giving and receiving. Somebody says, of one church. And you know what I was told by a leader in that church? He said, Brother Marvin, he said, it's amazing. Mama knows where I'm talking about. We ain't got but a few here and ain't nobody rich. He said, but I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life. 100% of every one of them every week are faithful. 100%. He said, so that's why we can give big and still have the bills paid and still feed people every week and not charge them a dime. They feed people in the community every week and ain't nobody in there wealthy and they ain't got but like maybe 25 sometimes of a good day, it may be 30. He said, but everybody that's a member here, everybody we don't have to preach on, we don't have to, they always give. Every time they get paid, they bring their time. He said, that's how. Wow. What could the church see God do through them? Think about it, people. Hear the Holy Ghost. I don't know why I'm getting on this, but somebody shouts, you, 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 you've got to get rooted in the house of God. You've got to get rooted in Bethel if you're going to flourish, grow, and see God do more in his presence. There's a connection. God showed me a, a dream years ago, and in the dream there was this huge snake. It was it was it was going through the water, and the, it was a round, big body of water. And God said, "This is the world," and I could see that large snake just going across that water. I saw people standing and pointing at it, looking at it. They didn't want to go where it was at, but here am I, oh crazy Marvin! I just jumped off up out there in there. Glory to God, and I have a Bible in my hand. Hallelujah! And I went to swimming toward that snake. That snake, glory to God, when I I, I thinking in the dream. Man, what have I jumped into? Because the closer I got to him and he got to me, I said, man, he's bigger than I, I saw him. Hallelujah. And he's coming at me and I take my Bible and I hit him upside the head. It knocks him back like that. And all of a sudden, out of the water, I pull a wallet. I remember a dream taking the wallet and I hit him with my wallet upside the head like this and it killed him. I said, Lord, how in the world did the wallet kill him and the word didn't? He said, Marvin, it's a combination two punch. Come on, somebody. Come on. God gives the word, but great are the company of those who publish it. Psalm 68, verses 11. God gave us the word, but it takes money for it to be preached. God told me then, he said, I'll make a way for you to preach this word. I'll speak to people. In Luke 8 and 3, Jesus, when he left his carpentry, labor and work, for three years, he no longer nailed nails with a hammer. God sent certain people. He sent, listen to this, he sent Susanna, the wife of Chezza, Herod Stewart a heathen king's clerk. Don't you know the heathen king's clerk was holding the money bag of the heathen king? God sent <laughs> the world to finance his son's ministry. In other words, other ones like, I can't remember her name. So it rhymes with Susanna. It's in Luke 8, 3. You might want for me. And many others, somebody say many others that ministered unto him of their substance. Substance means their finances. Somebody shout they ministered unto Jesus. Somebody shout they were financing his way to the cross. 
they were financing. When Jesus in Matthew 2, 11, a man was born of a virgin conceived by the Holy Ghost in Bethlehem's manger. Come on, somebody. He didn't have room in the end that night to be born. Luke 2, 7, he was born in a cold cave with a bunch of animals everywhere with a stink of animal dung all through the air. Amen. But God, hallelujah, two years after he was born, sent some magi, some kings from the Far East, and they brought unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. One little girl one time said, Jesus received on Christmas gold, common sense, and mirth. Boy, that, that, that'd be a gift for somebody at Christmas, wasn't it? especially to a politician. <laughs> Some common sense. <laughs> Hallelujah. His birth, he was supernaturally provided for. His ministry was supernaturally provided for. And in John 19, verses 41 and on, we find two men, Joseph of Arimathea, a Pharisee, and another one, Nicodemus, that came to him in the night in John 3. Come on, somebody. They took of their money, which was very costly in that day, to embalm or to bury or to take spices. They didn't embalm, but they took spiceries. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It was very costly. And they spent money to bury him. Somebody shout, God has ordained it. God has ordained. This is ministry. And I'm telling you, if you'll take care of his, he'll take care of yours. Yes. If you'll take care of his house, he'll take care of your house. Yes. Somebody shout, it's going to cost you something. 